or the limit, which I think is maybe even better in most circumstances. Limit comparison test allows you to get away from looking at inequalities, which can be cumbersome, and simply look at some easy ratios. Okay, those were for specifically positive series. If you just have a series, then the things we'll tr try to use, nth term test, okay, alternating series test, very important idea. And what we learned last time was something called the ratio test. There's also a root test, which is in this section. I'd rather not go into it. It's uh, theoretically better, it turns out, but practically not so good. I think we'll find everything we need right here in the ratio test. Well, I, I think that sort of ends it for us for the most part. You're not going to see much more than that. By no means is that the end of the list. In fact, there's a famous statement that there is no one test that is universally applicable. That is, every time someone comes up with a test, it's possible to come up with a series which that test does not apply to. Just doesn't, uh, doesn't work one way or another. So this list, uh, I guess, from a mathematician standpoint, is neat because there is no end to it. Now, these series over here, uh, not these, I should say, but this test over here was really based on the necessity to look at series which converge as being one of two types. Now, divergent is divergent. That's it. Not much to save it. But if a series converges, it is best to know whether it is absolute or conditional, absolute being the better. So most questions will be, OK, here's a series. Not does it just converge, but does this series converge absolutely? If not, does it converge conditionally? If not, then the thing would have to diverge. So it's a two-pronged question when someone says, does it converge? First to check this, then this, and if neither of those, of course, then you fall over here. Let me give you an example. This is probably very close to, if not exactly, one of your homework problems. So there's a series. Let's write out a few terms. Starts out with a plus sign, 1 over 2, alternate signs, uh, 2 over 4, uh, 3 over 8, 4 over 16, etc. Now, a few things come to my mind, and I hope it does to yours, too. If initially, you should always spend whatever it takes, five seconds, to ask yourself, does the nth term converge to zero? In the back of your mind, before you do anything, before you lose patience and throw up your hands, etc., give it a shot. Does the nth term go to zero? In this case, the answer is yes. Maybe it's not so obvious, but it does. So nth term test not applicable. But when it is, it's a quick out. It's not a positive series, so we won't try those yet. Uh, it is an alternating series. And as I said, I think you can show not too, it's not too difficult, but you'd have to work out a little bit. You could show that these terms not only go to zero, but decrease to zero. So this would imply that uh, alternating series test is applicable. And the series converges. But 
what kind of convergence? That's my question. Well, so far we haven't answered it. The alternating series test only says, well, it converges, but you'll need a little bit more to, to find out if it converges absolutely. Now, here's where the ratio test comes in. We, in effect, get to throw away the negative signs. This thing has powers, which is what a ratio test is good for, so let's give it a try. If you take the n plus first term over the nth term in absolute value, you'll get, okay, let's see what it looks like. Immediately, I throw away the alternating signs. Don't worry about the negative 1 to the n minus 1, etc. What we started out with was n over 2 to the n. Be careful. Everywhere you see an n, replace it literally, you know, like text rep, n with n plus 1. This will be n plus 1 on top, 2 to the n plus 1 on the bottom in the numerator. Now, when you flip things over and cancel, you'll get n plus 1 over n and a 1 half. Okay. Well, what's n plus 1 over n converged to? Anybody? 1. Good. So this in the limit converges to 1 half. The first factor goes to 1. I call that L. And last time, we told you, if that limit of the ratios, the limit of the ratios, converges to something that's strictly less than 1, the series converges. Absolutely. So here's an example where the ratio test shows you a bit more than just the alternating series test actually converges absolutely by the ratio test. L is, is the constant in Right. Question, if you take this particular sequence now of ratios, and it does have a limit, and that limit is strictly less than 1, then you have an absolutely convergent series. Uh, if you're kind of inquisitive as to why this works, by all means, look at the book. But what we're doing is making a comparison with a geometric series. That's why we're taking this ratio. What we're saying is that these terms tend to look like a geometric series with r equal a half, which is a convergent series. That's the basis for the ratio test. Anyway, we have absolute convergence. In fact, now that I look at it, we could have gotten away with uh, an even more interesting question. Let's come back here. What if I raised my n to the 19... 87. Okay, of course, everything else here is a bit different, but when you get over here, those are both 1987s, and this ratio right here is raised to the 1987. Now, what's n plus 1 over n to the 1987 converge to? Still 1. Okay, so it's really irrelevant what that power is. You're still going to get the same one-half limit, this series will still converge absolutely. So that may be amazing to you, but it isn't to me. I've told you before that exponentials, like e to the x or 2 to the x, grow faster than any polynomial, like x to the 1987, etc. Grow much faster. So in this particular case, it really doesn't make any difference as long as it's fixed. You can put a trillion up here if you wish, but as long as that exponent is fixed, you're going to have a convergent series, in fact, absolutely convergent. Where does the ratio test fail? Well, from my point of view, it only fails if your limit equals 1, equals 1 exactly, because the test then doesn't say anything, positive or negative. If this limit is greater than 1, then the series is still, the, the test, I should say, can still be invoked, a limit greater than 1 implies divergence of the series. So unless you get a limit equal to 1, the ratio test is actually something that's going to give you a result. Where is it equal to 1? Very simply, our good old harmonic series. 
Now we all know that this thing diverges, but by the ratio test, that limit of ratios is 1. So by ratio test, you know, it's my famous so what statement. Okay, your limit's one. Better go on to something else. Ratio test doesn't apply here. So even in some very simple cases, will the ratio test not uh, work? It's kind of strange because in the tough cases, it does work, things that you wouldn't have imagined before. Well, I, th I think you get the gist of that. Again, I can't sit down and do your homework for you, and I wouldn't want to. I think this is the, the proper place for you to look at the section on the ratio test and look at the problems and, and give it a shot and see how it goes. Let's get to the last topic, which is power series, and uh, use this stuff, although it wouldn't seem like it, because the questions change abruptly. They go something like this. Where does a series converge? And the reason for the where is that the series has an unknown in it, an x. In this case, x to the n over square root of n. Okay, so the, the where refers to the values of x where you will have convergence. Okay, here's a, an easy one for you. I'll give you the first guess. What's a good x in x where it converges? I heard one. I know that's wrong, so I won't put it down. Zero. That's an easy one. That's why I gave you the first one. Thing obviously converges at zero because uh, the partial sums are all zero. Every term is zero, and the series converges to zero. So that's easy. I said that I heard an answer of one. Why do we know that that is not a convergence point? What happens at one? If I plug one in for x, p series, right? I finally hear it out there. 1 over square root of n is a divergent p equals 1 half series. So I need to put a line through that. 1 is not a point of convergence. So now you can appreciate it's not an empty question. Some x's work, some don't. How about minus 1? Is that going to be convergent or divergent? Convergent. Everyone agree? Anybody? What's the series? Let's take a look at it. Minus 1 to the n over square root of n. Is that convergent? It is an alternating series. So it is convergent. Is it absolutely convergent? which means if I put in uh, all pluses, you're going to have a convergent series then? Why not? Kind of a one-on-one -on -one situation here today. Yeah, if you put all pluses in, you're back up here. So this thing actually, if you want to be more specific, would be conditional convergence because, yes, it converges alternating series test, no, it doesn't converge absolutely because the series of absolute values is the divergent p equals one-half series. So that turns out to be just conditional convergence. Now, so far, these have been easy because these are all series you've seen before. The scenario is different. I mean, what's, a, what's all this guesswork? Let me try another one for you. How about x equals a half?
Well, let's see what the series looks like. And that's a bit clumsy, so let's put it this way. And this is a fair question, I still say, because I've picked an x, I've plugged it into my series, and you're looking at a series of constants, in fact, positive constants. So you should be able to, with your little techniques, figure out what this series does. Does it converge or does it diverge? Does it remind you of anything? I'm hoping that some of that mumbling out there well, is. Okay, someone says, I see a 1 over square root of n. What's that got to do with our series? Which way? Great, you caught yourself. I was just about ready to say it anyway. So what? Your series, term by term, is less than the p equals one-half series, which diverges. So that doesn't tell you anything. Limit comparison test? Possible, but you still got to supply me with something to compare it with. Uh, integral test? I'd back off here. Not that it's impossible, but I don't see uh, much chance of that. We haven't done too many 2 to the x's, and that square root of x, I'm sure, messes everything all the way up. Does the I s what I was going to say was, I see people out there, I uh, hope, thinking through the list. Does the nth term go to 0? Yes, obviously. Uh, integral test, no, that's, that's not good. Comparison, maybe. What would we compare it with? Or ratio test? or alternating series test. There's stuff still around. It's not alternating series. So we could try ratio test. Try ratio test. OK, so let's see what we get. 1 over radical n plus 1, 2 to the n plus 1 up top, 1 over radical n, 2 to the n in the denominator. Let me make a long story short. This will simplify to square root of 1 over 1 plus 1 over n times a half. I wrote it that way, so it is, again, I hope, obvious that this converges to 1 up front. And so it works. The ratio converges to an L, in this case, equal to half, less than 1, so the series converges by ratio test. And in fact, I didn't have to take absolute values, but that's OK. I wouldn't say it converges absolutely because it's already positive. There's no reason to talk about absolute convergence. It's redundant in this case. So we have it. The series converges, in fact, absolutely. I didn't want to give up on comparison test because it's possible. I asked, what does it look like? Someone provided me with uh, half the story, but that wasn't the right half. What's the other half? 1 over 2 to the n. And this would have been one probably I would have chosen. This is a nth term of a geometric series, r equal a half. That converges. Therefore, my given positive series converges. Make sure it's a positive series when you make this comparison. And for this reason also, you, as I've reminded you repeatedly, this requires you to know a, a few series by which to make comparisons. So you should know the geometric series and the harmonic series and P-series in general. So either way, 
ratio test or comparison test or limit comparison if you really want to work at it. We'll give you convergence. So notice what's happened. At some points, like zero, the thing converges. Some points it diverges, like x equals 1. At some points it converges conditionally, like minus 1. And at x equals 2, it converges absolutely. So the thing we started out with has drastically different properties depending on the value of x. And I haven't answered the question yet. The question is, where does this thing converge? I've pulled out two points where it converges, minus 1 and plus a half. Now, this could be a late night if you're doing this homework problem. I mean, you've got to check out an infinite number of x's before you go on to the next problem. So next time you try a fourth, and then you can try 5 and 1987 and pi and, hey, something's going on here. Absolutely, that's the case. What we're looking at is not uh, what you would think. It's not a busy work homework problem just trying to see if you really know what's going on. This thing is, in fact, a very special critter. It's called a power series. This is a so-called power series. Maybe for obvious reasons, it involves this power of x. And so let's step back and look at the power series story and then we'll come back and see what this one's about. It's a fairly simple idea. Let's do it a little bit more generally. What you'll see in the book is something like this. n equals 0 to infinity a n x minus c to the n. This is a power series. What it looks like, in my mind, is an infinite polynomial. I mean, it doesn't look exactly like that to you, perhaps, but that's roughly what it is. Look at what you're looking at here. a sub 0, power to the 0, that's just 1, plus a1, x minus c, plus a2, x minus c squared plus a3 x minus c cubed plus dot, dot, dot. That's the old indication that this is supposed to go on forever. So just as constant series were an extension of the idea of plain old summation, power series is an extension of the idea of the polynomial. Uh, if you recall, nothing is simpler than a polynomial, especially for graphing purposes and for calculus purposes. If you had to integrate or differentiate, I think I would choose this if I had a choice. Everything else seemed to be a lot harder. Well, what's interesting is that almost all the important functions can be represented as an infinite polynomial. And we'll see next time where the payoff is there. But that's kind of neat. Well. Let's get back to our problems. Your question, a bunch of problems in the book. Where does the power series converge? What are the x's? Here's the answer. Real easy and simple to remember, and of course you should remember. We're talking about a power series so-called expanded about the point C right there. OK, so have a, get a little number line and put C right in the middle. And it turns out that there is a symmetrical, may not look like it to you, but it's supposed to be symmetrical boundary, R units in both directions. Okay. And what's so special about this? Well, it turns out to be the following. Inside that interval, R units to either side of C. The series, the power series, let's say PS, converges absolutely. Power series converges absolutely inside the interval. What's more, the series diverges outside the interval.
So when I was saying it was a, it's going to be a long night doing these homework problems because you've got to check all these various X's, of course I was kidding you. You don't have to check all these X's. All you really have to do is come up with this number R and then automatically this is the situation. If you have R, then here are your answers. This is where the series converges absolutely. It diverges outside. The only hang-up is at these points themselves, the boundary points. There is no pre-established way of saying what's going to happen. You just have to check it case by case. Simply stick in the numbers and see what you get. So there are two points, two parts to the problem. One, get this value of R. C is given to you. That's the point in the series itself. And then once you have R, check to see what happens at the endpoints. Where do you get R? Well, at least in our book, usually from a ratio test. Okay, that's the, the big summation. Again, the book has a few more details, but I think this will serve you well when you're doing your homeworks. Let's come back and look at our problem. Here's our power series. You might say it doesn't look like that over there. Let me rewrite it because it's kind of a mess anyway. The question is, does R equal L? Pretty close. That's a good guess. I think you're just upside down, but we'll see here shortly. Okay, in this particular case, let me rewrite it this way. Over on the left there, this is what I call the a sub n's, the coefficients of the infinite polynomial, and the value for c is equal to zero. So if you have a problem, I suspect it would be nice for you, if, because it works for me anyway, to basically next write a little bit of a graph, put zero down there, tell yourself over here at plus r and over here at minus r, we got some big question marks, but inside, we know we have absolute convergence. We'll put AC for that. AC inside. Not too sure what happens at the ends. We'll check that out. In fact, we've already done it, to tell you the truth, but you don't know that yet. And divergence outside. That's the situation. So let's see what R is. That question, is R equal to L, is really fundamentally what these homework problems are about. You apply the ratio test as if this were a series of constants. And from that, you will figure out what R should be. See, we applied the ratio test here, but we only did it for x equals a half. Let me write down the series again. and then apply my ratio test to that thing right there. Unfortunately, we have a, I guess I shouldn't have chosen a in, but that's okay. Here is the next term divided by the present term. That's our standard ratio test ratio right there. Okay, so here's the term you're looking at. Same story as before, replace n by n plus 1 to get the numerator. And even though you don't see constants everywhere, that's fine. That's really the point of using the ratio test. Okay, now, this time, the absolute values are important because I don't know whether x is positive or negative. So if you pull things in, you'll get square root of n over square root of n plus 1. And you'll have absolute x to the n plus 1 up top and an absolute x to the n on the bottom. I've done a little bit of flipping around. I hope you don't mind that, but maybe that would be a next step for most people. <coughs> Actually, after you've done a few of these kinds of problems, you will make probably a quicker simplification once you see how most of them go. Most of them go this way. Namely, this is left with just one factor of x when you make that cancellation. That's typical, not necessarily going to happen every time. So we're left with our ratio equaling, uh, let me do it again, 
1 over 1 plus 1 over n. Hey, that's what we got last time. That's not surprising, by the way. What's different is rather than have a half, I've got absolute x. So here's how we can kill an infinite number of birds with one stone, basically. We just let x ride along to see what happens. This thing converges to, as n goes to infinity, thinking of x being fixed, of course, 1 times absolute x. And that's my L. What do we have to have for convergence? Well, we get absolute convergence if L, which in this case is absolute x, is less than 1. And we get divergence if L, which is absolute x, is strictly greater than 1. So you see, that says it all. That interval that I was talking about has to be from minus 1 to plus 1 because over there, the ratio test says we have absolute convergence when x in absolute value is less than 1. That means it's in here. And the ratio test also says that we have divergence when absolute x is bigger than 1, which would be outside here. So almost all your power series problems will go through the same methodical steps. Apply the ratio test and figure out when the ratio is less than 1. At that point, you know what the, the so-called R is. Now, I haven't named it, but uh, I should. Your book calls it radius of convergence. Radius meaning how far out from the center, in this case 0, one should go. Well, let's see. I've got R. Come over here. I can say this. R equals 1. How about the endpoints? What happens at the endpoints? Well, luckily, we've already done this problem. Remember, I asked you, and I had to erase it, though, what happens at x equals 1. We plugged it in. We got the divergent p series, p equals a half. So it diverges right there at plus 1. But when we stuck in a negative 1, we found that it was uh, conditionally convergent. And so the answer to this is, specifically anyway, it converges conditionally. Does it always happen that way? No. Some series diverge at both endpoints. Some series converge at both endpoints. Some do something like what you see, converge at one end, diverge at the other. So it's, there's no way you can pin it down other than checking the endpoints themselves. But you see, the questions become easy. Once you perform the ratio test, the question is not where does this series converge anymore, but does it converge at this point? Does it converge at this point? The problem's reduced to really two points that you have to really work at. And usually you don't have to work at them very hard. OK, this time you were right. The, uh, the value for L turns out to be the value for R. Now, you might see where that is not necessarily the case. In fact, let me see if I can find a problem here in my sheet. I think this one will work. This is on page 535, number 4. you find that. Again, where does this power series converge? The problem is expanded around 0, so it's just like our last one. Here's plus r. Here's minus r. We need those, and we need to know what specifically happens at the endpoints. So kind of quickly here, what's the ratio test going to give us?
Here is the nth term. And the next term looks like this. And of course, we do need to take absolute values. Well, let's see. Absolute values means, and come back here and play around with this, I really don't have to worry about negative signs. Let's get rid of those things. So if you just compare those powers of 3, looks like I've got a 3 in the numerator. Similarly, I've got an absolute x left, once I pull the absolute values in, in the numerator. And if you like in the denominator, we can put it somewhere else, but let's just do it this way, n over n plus 1. There are other ways to do it, but that's good enough. So I think when you reduce, you'll find that that is the expression. This converges to 3 absolute x. That's our L. And I need my 3 absolute x to be less than 1. That's going to be true if and only if absolute x is less than 1 -third. So Mr. Foster's guess was nearly right. The radius of convergence is not L, but as it turns out, the reciprocal of L. Okay, so in this case, L needs to be 1, or I should say less than 1, and this produces uh, basically the reciprocation <coughs> type idea. I, I think I said it wrong, but anyway, L itself is not the answer. You've got to look at the relationship of L with 1. So here it is. That's part of the story. The radius of convergence looks like that. So we are now almost done. Absolute convergence in here, divergence here, divergence here. What if you put in 3 to the n here? Okay, we, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to answer that, but if you put a 3 to the n in, for, uh, pardon me, a third in for x, all but one factor of 3 cancels. You'll have an alternating sign, and uh, I'll let you check it out. This thing is conditionally convergent. That's a good little exercise in itself for you to do. Alternating, <coughs> alternating series test would give you, as it turns out, conditional convergence. And if you put a negative 3, you don't have alternating signs anymore, and you'll get basically the harmonic series, I believe. And I think, just looking at it anyway, you'll get divergence at the left-hand endpoint. So again, you can't guess what's going to happen. You just have to check it out. <coughs> but that is all you have to do to show what happens to a power series. Next time, the question is, what good are they? And it turns out the answer is a lot. Hope you'll be there to see it. Good luck. <coughs>